Okay, today I'm gonna to show you what we do for movement to improve cervical spine disc bulges using McKenzie principles. Now, these are diagnosed disc bulges in the cervical spine. Sometimes they're posterolateral, sometimes they're just straight posterior ones, sometimes they've got a bit of nerve root impingement with some referral symptoms down the arm. Regardless, what we try and do is restore the movement because a lot of the time, cervical spine people or people with cervical spine disc bulges or protrusions have lost their range and it's very painful. So when they bend forward, if you bend forward for me, Emma, they get pain that way, they might get pain going backwards, they might get pain going sideways. Regardless, we've got to try and restore that. So like with the lumbar spine, we do McKenzie extensions and lying first before standing because it's unloaded. So what we're gonna do, I'll show you what I'm gonna do with cervical spine, is we unload them to do retraction and retraction extension off the end of the bed, it looks pretty scary, it's totally fine. Um, and then we get them doing that for homework because it's such a um, sort of easier way for that person to start restoring their movement and start reducing the problem, help with the pain on their journey of getting it right. So Emma, if you go on your back for me. Um, what I get them doing, and this is a lot what I call playing the faith game because they've got to trust you and let you have their head. If they don't, they tend to use all their neck muscles in the front and guard themselves, especially when they're sore, okay? So hopefully, you know, we can get them lying down in a position where I can have their head nice and relaxed and the muscle tension sort of backs off a little bit and they can trust me with that. What we need to get them doing though is coming right to the end of the bed. So if you come right here, so when you look down, keep going, there needs to be sort of a gap where their C7, T1 is, that needs to be off the end of the bed, all right? So the end of the bed sort of lines up with maybe their T2, and that'll give them a bit of a hinge point to allow me to get their head right back over the end of the bed. First thing we want to try and do is play the faith game. They've got to try and relax this. So I teach them to try and let those muscles in their front of their neck relax and let their head go really heavy in my hand like a bowling ball. So she's got to try and relax that. That's the first thing. I can try and give them a bit of traction, which is pulling them that way to help them relax, keep them nice and snug against me so they feel a little bit safer that I'm not gonna drop their head off the end of the bed. Now, hopefully in that position, I can get them sort of relatively pain-free and it feels okay. The traction does help. So remember, if you've got a disc bulge, the more compression on top, like the weight of your head on sitting, okay, especially if they sit and they flex, the more pressure they've got that tends to be more sore. So if I can get them unloaded with no gravity and provide some traction, I'll give them a bit of gapping, which may be just enough to try and make them relax and get that pain down. Now what we're gonna do is retraction. So it's that way, all right? Now retraction is cervical spine extension and upper cervical spine flexion, okay? So we're, for these disc bulges, we're talking about the disc bulges that are sort of the lower cervical spine, not the upper. So we'll get extension when we do retraction. So this one here, this is just a guide, okay? So I'm gonna sort of guide it, I'm not gonna force it down, but I'm gonna try and guide it down into retraction, which is dropping the head vertically in that plane and then pulling them back this way. So I've got a little bit of pressure here, I'm guiding them down so they can sort of try and relax into it, all right? I'm keeping my pressure that way with traction, all right? And letting them slowly drop down. So my right hand is dropping down. Now you notice I'm probably squatting a little bit to try and keep her head level with me. Okay, so when I lower her head, I'm actually, I'm lowering down as well. So you tend to sort of do a little bit of a squat with this. And the first few reps, we always just go nice and gentle with her, all right? Trying to just go through just a little bit of range, maybe sort of a grade, if you imagine like the start to the middle of the range is where I'm gonna go for like a grade two, almost a three. but that movement there, and I can notice whether she's fighting that or not. I can see whether she's trying to grab on or not. And it might take me 10 or 20 reps of those to her to fully trust what I'm doing and realize that it's not sore, and then she can relax. Then we will get some actual benefit from that movement. So this is her attraction. Down, a little bit of pressure on. As she gets better at relaxing, all right, I will be able to push that a little bit harder right to the end range it'll feel like a bit of choking sort of thing because you sort of, when you go right back, you tend to sort of adjust, well, not crush the windpipe, but it does change a little bit. So she'll feel a little bit choky with that. She's got to breathe out as I drop down and then relax. Now that's going to really help with trying to just get the movement better in her lower cervical spine, even just 
doing some of those, you'll probably find that her extension is already better, her flexion is probably less painful. Now, what we wanna do, some people, we can go all the way into extension as well. It depends on how acute they are, how big, if they've got a big protrusion, or if they've just got a normal minor disc bulge, it does depend on a lot of things. But when we do, or when we can get them doing retraction extension, this is what it looks like. So if I drop them down into retraction like that, get to the end range, then I'm gonna pull more traction that way and guide them back, keeping her locked into me, into extension, maybe halfway or a quarter, and then come back up. So you notice I went retraction, extension, reverse to back out. So sort of flexion and then back out again. So let's show that again. So retraction, extension, return to where the retraction was and then lift them back up. Okay, so sort of in, down, back, and up. Now I'll just do one rep at a time, okay? Sometimes you might get a bit tired just holding this position, but all this will do, let's get her relaxed a little bit, we're just gonna slowly, slowly, slowly help improve her range. So what we're gonna try and do, after we've done quite a few of those, is let her, she starts guarding, you just let it reset again, let her relax, and then you're gonna try and let it go then, and go all the way, into extension the full way and back. You don't have to go absolute full range. They, most of these people have not had the full range for a very long time, okay? So they're probably a bit stiff there anyway. And that's half the reason why we're doing this. It's not just to try and affect this bulges, it's to try and get the moving back and stretch the stiffness out because they haven't been able to get there because it's been too sore, so they've lost the range. This way, without gravity and a bit of traction and a bit of guidance and less of their muscles doing the work. So I'm doing the work for them. Gravity's doing the work for them. Those muscles that have been spasming and guarding her to say, don't go there, don't have to work. So there's less of that sort of guarding thing going on. She can, we, well, we can sneak in extension movement without irritating her, improves her range and it reduces the her muscle spasm. So that's a win-win. Now, with this one, if that person has say a posterior lateral disc bulge, and it's going, so going at the right hand side. At the end of that extension, I'm gonna go and rotate her right to help close it down a little bit more. So, because these are the people that you know cannot go to the right. So if they've got a right-sided disc bulge, they can't extend, they can't go right. So we're gonna try and get that movement. So if you let it retract again, good. Let her go on extension. You'll notice as she goes back, I can let her go away from me. She'll go all the way and then I'm gonna rotate her to the right, come back, and return. Now you can see it's quite laborious, right? There's a lot of sort of effort going on for one rep. We've gotta do about 20 or 30 of those, so it's gonna take quite a while. And then she's gotta do it for homework, all right? So once we've sort of done that, we retest her, how's her movement going? Is that improving a little bit? And if that's improving, it's gonna give her a bit of confidence that, hey, this is working, we can do this at home. Now, I only select a few people with this to do it at home because it is hard to do. You've got to do it off the end of the bed. I mean, most people don't have a plinth like this at home, so they have to do it off the end of their sofa, if it's a long sofa, or the end of their bed, if they don't have a headboard or the side of their bed. It gets a little bit tricky, but for those people who can do it for homework, and it does work for, this is what we do. So, hands around your back of your neck. They are gonna be me. So now that they, you know, I've taught them you know, over the period of that half hour what to do, how it feels, improvements, then they've got to do it themselves and you've got to educate them with that as well. So she's going to use her hands as my hands and then she's got to retract down. So the same thing, she's got to let herself go into retraction, then bring her back up again. So she might do the start of doing just retraction. So I'll just guide her through it, making sure she doesn't sort of tilt back for the first rank. She just want to do just retraction and then back, making sure she's always the right spot on the end of the bed, okay? And then when she's gonna go through her attraction extension, she goes into attraction and then slowly lets her head roll backwards. And this is the hard part for people because they've really got to trust themselves now. And then she gets back to there, then she's got to let that go up and go into full extension, okay? As far as you can. You may be limited on how flexible your hands are. Bring it back, Emma. Yeah. So some people, of course, are not as flexible and they may find they just can't get back with their arms or if they've had a radiculopathy through their arm, that might be quite tight to actually do that. That neural tension might be quite high. So 
if it's on the right hand side, she might just take that right arm away. If, that, if she goes back and that's no good, she might just hold it with the left arm. Okay, so we can do different things with that. Try that again for me. So retraction, then rock back and extension, then full extension through the whole spine as far as you can go. Now, if you can go at that point, look to the right, get that right side moving back. If it's a right-sided disc bulge, come back, return, and up again. And there you have it. So, have a sit again. This is the sort of stuff we give people. Specific, selective few people that, you know, really respond to unloaded movement. Sometimes the mobilizations don't work, and sometimes when they're trying to do stuff and sitting, it doesn't work. This is a really good, nice relief for them during the day. They can do it at home, we do it in the clinic to get that sort of disc pressure changed, but also to try and restore, get rid of that muscle spasm. So it works really well for them. Okay, see you next time.